Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we're back with another Totally Blind Head to Head where we react to the pours and the prices before we find out what we're drinking. If it's an available product, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. In these head to head matchups that we do, we randomly select one of these pairs from our blind sample pool and we taste them totally double blind so that you get our most honest opinions possible without any labels or bias. You'll see what we think about each pour, how we think they compare to each other, and in the end, we'll give them what we call a real world score, which is a 10 point score, mm -hmm. but it's not your everyday 10 point score. It's based on the, what we find out during the tasting as well as on the price and the availability and whether we would buy it or not. If you like that sort of thing, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We put these types of videos out every week. And we also have some more podcast style videos and some other blind sample tasting videos as well. All right, let's get random and see which one of these 18 pairs we're tasting today. 11. 11, so that's nine, 10, 10 11. 11. Perfect, we're gonna get these poured and we will be back post haste, whatever that means. Post haste. To tell you what we think about them. All right, let's get into the first glass on the nose. This smells like the outside. That's all I'm getting. Outside? The outside, the outside. <laughs> okay. Not outside, the outside. This, and I'm not saying it is, but I'm just gonna put it out there. This to me smells like a Buffalo Trace product. It smells like a caramel, like a candy apple. Well, it's like the caramel covered I candy get apple. Ap I could get apple juice. With oak. That's what it reminds me of. I'm not saying that's what it is. Yeah. I'm just saying that's what it reminds me of. I'm not going to put that juju on this glass. I'm just getting some of those similar notes. I could get apple juice and... Apple juice, like yeah. barrel aged apple juice. Mm, yeah. it's, it is sweet, but it's tempered sweetness with the oaky element that's yeah. coming in. And it's nice. Like and it's it, like it is, you came in from the outside and then I'm smelling you. Yeah. It's really, it's really nice on the nose. Let's get it on the palate. Okay. That's good solid bourbon. It's pretty drying. Um, a little bit on the back. You might be sensitive to drying stuff today. Maybe. You, you've commented on that before. To me, this is really classic bourbon, but just sweet forward. It mm -hmm. gravitates the from the typical dark bourbon flavor profile, and it just skews sweet. It's a little light like um you said dark and it didn't yeah. feel dark it feels like a lighter flavor profile not yeah light and not watery but like light flavor yeah and not candy sweet mm -hmm. not artificial fruit candy sweet mm -hmm. it's just like bourbon light but but it, it does have a concentration of flavor at that lighter the profile. flavor is a light and airy yeah. flavor profile but there's a lot of it yeah, that makes sense. it would be something great to sip on like a hot summer day, mm -hmm. like today. This mm. would be a good product for that. Although it does have a little oomph, seems like at least from the proof point. Let's get another sip and okay. verify that. Yeah, I'm just getting drying oak. Yeah. It, it does taste like a boozy apple juice. Then then that kind of dries out my tongue at the end. It's going to be really interesting to see how that stuff compares to glass two. Let's get into glass two on the nose. Wow, this smells so sweet. It, yeah, this smells real nice. Like, so sweet. This, I don't know if I'd say nice. I'm not saying bad, but just so sweet. It honestly smells really similar to glass one, except it smells sweeter, darker, richer, more syrupy. Yeah, all but those it, things. It, it leans sweet and light in flavor profile, but then somehow it- Syrupy. Is, it gets more syrupy than like, glass. Like I expect it to be thick. It's not going to be because it's liquid, like a yeah. whiskey, but you almost think it's going to be like a th syrup, thick yeah. syrup. Glass one smells and tastes really good. <laughs> what, what? Glass one smells and tastes really good. Yes. Glass two smells even glitter <laughs> and it smells like it's going to taste even more glitter. Okay. So let's get into the palate. Okay. Mm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. That's all I got. It is everything I wanted glass one to be. It's not as drying. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It smells way sweeter than it tastes. But it, that said, it does taste sweet, but it doesn't, it's not too sweet for me. I don't love super sweet stuff, but this yep. is appropriately sweet. The sweetness that is there is anchored in oak. Yeah, but it's not drying. It tempers it. The oak is sweet. Everything is sweet. But it's 
balanced sweetness because I'm yeah. I'm pretty sensitive to like super sweet or like fake sweet. Yeah, and it's it's pretty syrupy on the palate. Like at least in comparison to the glass one, that's what yep. we're coming that's off what of. We're coming off clear of. our palates out. You didn't see that part. We take a little bit of a break. Clear our palates. Coming off a of glass one, this has a lot of the same attributes, but it's just it's just turning the dials up a notch across yeah. the board. Yep. Let's take another sip and verify that. Okay. Man, that's just really good bourbon. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you've said it all. Yeah. What, what more can we say? There's nothing else. We we actually do need to take some time with both of these, clear our palate, start with the second glass, go back to the first. Yeah. That can be very telling. Stay tuned to find out whether they change for us and how they compare once we take some time with them. All right, after spending some time with both these pours, did they change for you? Did they stay the same? How do they compare? Let's get into our ratings, starting with glass one. Where okay. are you at? So for me, glass one was solid. It gets a thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on flavor, thumbs up on experience. Good overall pour. For me, glass one's gonna get two thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, thumbs up on the experience. Okay. I wanted to start commenting on it. I'm gonna hold that yeah. for a minute. Let's okay. get into glass two. Where are you at? So maybe it's cause I blow dried my hair today, but I'm feeling real generous. <laughs> I'm feeling real, yourself. I'm feeling myself and glass, You're feeling glass two. Glass two, I'm feeling. It gets two thumbs up on nose, two thumbs up on flavor, and two thumbs up on experience. Wow. It is hitting me in all the ways today. Like it, it's just hitting me right. Well, I'm a little jealous of glass two. All right. So <laughs> glass two for me gets two thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, thumbs up on the experience. I almost could go, I, I almost could meet you at two thumbs up yeah. across the board of glass two. It isn't my preferred flavor profile. I prefer a little bit darker flavor profile. Like it. it leans a little more fruity. And then experience wise, I just wish it had a little bit more oomph and a little bit more gravitas as it were. Yeah. But for what it is, it is really, really, really good. For me, I'm gonna guess this is a bourbon and I tend to like yeah. think bourbons are too sweet. For yeah. me, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this could be like my everyday bourbon because I don't want it to be too dark or I won't want to drink it every day, it's too heavy. That's fair. As syrupy as a nose is, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Watch these both be like $15 bottles. I mean, I don't think that's gonna be the case. If it's an inexpensive bottle, I'm yeah. there all day every day. If Gla it's too expensive, then I'm not Glass back. two smells and tastes like it might be something special. Glass one tastes like a really good bourbon. Yep. Glass two tastes like it might be they both are good. a cut above. Let's let's just yeah. say that. They're no, they're both, both they're both very good. I had a very clear preference towards glass two. Same. All right, let's find out the price first, okay. react to that, and then find out what we've been All drinking. Right, I'm so excited. glass number one oh, is in our key number 71. Price on glass number one is $45. Solid. Price on glass number two, number 72 in our key. $35. You gotta be kidding me. But I see what it is. That smells like that? Yeah. At 35 bucks? I'm, I'm. Buy glass, hey, whatever glass two is, before we find out, buy it. Well, if you can find it. Because oh. I can see what it is. Man. All right, glass number one, number 71 is? Elmer T. Lee. Okay. 90 proof. Well, yeah. It, it, I would, it has a lot of flavor for 90 proof. Yeah. It does. I would say it's 100 proof. Uh, I would have guessed 100 proof on this no, one. No, they taste low proof to me. The Not nose me. hit me better on it tonight than it has probably ever before. Mm. So kudos And I to might it have that. influenced you on that. But no, I mean, it, this is good. Good okay. solid. Good, like yeah. I said, good solid bourbon. Number two, number 72 in our key. Eagle Rare. <sighs> Why does Eagle Rare smell so good? I don't Eagle know. Eagle Rare makes me mad, all right? <laughs> Eagle right here gets on my nerves. It kind of gets on my nerves too. Because it's so hard to find. It's in some markets. In the UK, I feel. I think someone commented you can get it like all day every well, day. Well, people in California say they can get it all the time. Yeah. I'm at the point now where I'm just like ready to buy cases of Eagle Rare because mm, I mean, it's, it's the low proof Buffalo Trace product that is really good and really enjoyable. I mean, I said it would be my everyday sipper. <laughs> I mean, it's a 10 year age stated 90 it proof. Just, 35, we paid $37.99 for the last bottle of Eagle Rare. What I want out of a bourbon, because again, I'm more of a rye, like I prefer rye. What I want out of a bourbon, Eagle Rare delivers. Yeah. Unfortunately, like it's hard to find here. And I'm not saying that 
because it's hard to find. If it, I wish it was easier to find. Yeah, this is an interesting matchup. They're both from Buffalo Trace. They're both 90 proof. Mm -hmm. Elmer T. Lee is crazy hard to get bottle. It's like a lottery bottle in our market. Oh, is it? And pretty much every market, it's a lottery bottle. So is it $45 when you can get it in the lottery? It, I put 45. It's actually, we paid $42.99 for this okay. from a vested relationship with a local store. You know, that's just... Every once in a while, we get an opportunity to buy something. Okay. We bought it. We put it in a bunch of blind head heads okay. and sent it out to a bunch of people to sample out as well. So it's all right. Like, it's good. People pay $300 for it on the secondary in our market. And stores sell it for $300 and people buy it at that. It is good, but it's, I don't know if it's $300 good personally. No. But me. Eagle Rare, we paid $37.99. Around here, you either have to have a hookup or you have to be in the right place at the right time to get it. And you can get it about once a month if you're in the right place at the right time. Okay. You can get Eagle Rare. But your timing has to be impeccable. You almost have to not have a job to be able to go That's to a store around the last Wednesday or Thursday of every month. Man, Eagle Rare, man. All right, let's, Eagle Rare, let's talk about our retail and consumer scores, respectively. We got to get into that. Retail being the retail side of the equation, okay. price and availability, that matters to us. Mm -hmm. And then Consumer side of the equation, we as consumers, if they're sitting on the shelf in front of us for retail, would we buy them or not? Yep. So let's get into it. Where are you rating Elmer T. Lee on retail and consumer scores? So for the whole lack of availability, it gets a thumbs down on retail score. Yep. The price is good, but if you can only get it in a lottery, I ain't about that mess. Yeah. But it's sitting on a shelf in front of you for $42.99, $43.99. Would you buy a bottle Maybe. if you got it in a lottery? Maybe. So I'm just okay. Okay. Not a hard pass, but... You're not it's a 100 percent buy. If either. I had like an extra 42, maybe. Yeah. Okay. For me, it's going to get a thumbs down on retail. It's just so hard to find. The yeah. price is so high. If you yeah. do find it, it's marked up. Would I buy it if I saw it at 40, 45 bucks again? Thumbs up. I'm going to buy a bottle okay. just because it's so hard to find. Okay. Honestly, a lot of really highly allocated bottles almost land in two thumbs up territory on consumer scores for me personally, because of the limited availability. Like I wanna buy them because I have an opportunity to. Mm -hmm. Elmer T. Lee is probably one of the most overhyped products I've ever tasted. So that's why it's only gonna get a thumbs up. Okay. And most of that just goes to the rarity and the kind of cool bottle. Uh, Let's get into Eagle Rare. That gummy. Eagle Rare. Where are you at on retail and consumer? So I have to give it just okay on a retail score. The yeah. price, the dollar amount is good. For what you're getting. For what you're getting. But in our market, it's hard to find. So that's not good. So it it gets just okay. Yeah. But you run into a store and you're seeing it sitting in front of you for 35, 40 bucks. Are you buying it? <laughs> Two thumbs up. <laughs> okay. I almost said a bad word. All right. For me... <laughs> Just okay on retail. The price is fantastic for a 10 year age stated bourbon. And it's really, it's really, really good whiskey. Would I buy it if it's sitting in front of me for 40 or 45 bucks or 35 or 40 bucks? Two thumbs up. Yeah. I'm tired of pretending like I don't love Eagle Rare, okay? <laughs> Every time it gets me, Every time. particularly on the nose, it always strikes me as something that is special, special on the nose. And then on the palate, it's always really, really, really solid. Not quite to my flavor profile preferences, mm -hmm. as we've already covered, but really good, really enjoyable. Yeah. It's a fantastic pour to start the night with. That being said, even though I, as you will see, really like this product, I'm not going to hunt it and I'm not going to pay over retail for it, but I do love it. Okay. We get our real world scores by adding up the thumbs you see on the screen. There are 10 possible points available, but this ain't Elmer T. Lee or some Eagles 10 point scoring system. This is more like a bell curve. Yeah. Most things fall in the middle. If you can get in that four to six point range, you're doing pretty good. Yep. I mean, you think about it, thumbs up across the board is a five. That's a good solid pour. Yep. If you can get above six, you're starting to get really, really exceptional in our book. That's where you start getting to the really high value products mm -hmm. on the market. With that said, let's get into these two. Elmer T. Lee, where are you at on real world score? So for me, Elmer T. Lee gets a 3.5 out of 10. Uh, I'd say that's accurate. And unfortunately, it was the, the retail score hampered it. Um, it tastes good, but the unavailability of it, it hinders it. And that's what I, I mean, that factors into my score. Yeah. For me, it gets a 5 out of 10. 
which I think is a high, as high as Elmer Tilly has ever scored for me. A lot of that was helped by the nose coming across really well. Mm. And it honestly got some bonus points on the consumer score for me wanting to buy it again, even though it's not my favorite product. And I think it's overpriced even at retail. The hype and the rarity do make me want to buy a bottle if I ever get a chance. Mm. Like if I won one in the lottery, I'm just gonna be real with you guys. I'm gonna buy it. I'm not gonna pass it Josh up. Josh needs to fight the FOMO guys. Well, I'll buy it and then I'll share it with people, share it with friends, share it with patrons, okay. all that stuff because okay. I want other people to know that the hype isn't all it's cracked up to be. My favorite thing to do with our Elmer T. Lee bottle that we have is to put it in blinds against <laughs> Evan Williams 1783 <laughs> and show people that a $13 bottle can be better than a bottle that people pay $300 like that, for. Yeah. Getting in the weeds, let's move on okay. to our new love-hate relationship. We're just, I'm embracing I have a love now. relationship. You have a you hate have relationship. A love, I have a hate relationship with the rare because it's not available. And it's the whiskey that I wish were available because this is like, this could be an ambassador of bourbon mm. if Buffalo Trace would just let it be. Mm. But okay. let's, let's, All right. real world score on Eagle Rare. Let's get into it. So Eagle Rare for me gets an 8.5. Whoa. Out of 10. whoa. And I, we were talking off camera or maybe wow. we, we were recording still, but. We have previously recorded my capsule whiskey collection, and I think by the time this airs, you, that will, video will already You're have come that, out. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna have to add this one. I might actually have to take another thing out uh, and add. Eagle, no, it's a capsule. It has to be combined, condensed. So we'll see. But Eagle Rare is making its way into my capsule whiskey collection yeah. one way or another. I'll put that link in the video description below. Yeah. For me, Eagle Rare gets a 6.5 out of 10. I. I don't know that a 90 proof pour can score much better than that. I mean, I mean, as at this point, there's just like two products. It's like Eagle Rare Tenure and 10 Cup Tenure Bourbon that mm, are like ten the, cup good, those yeah. are like the two bottles that I would buy that are under 100 proof and everything else can go kick rocks. If you like low proof bourbon mm -hmm. and you're, you're okay buying low proof bourbon mm -hmm. or you're dabbling in bourbon or whatever and you see Eagle Rare for what 50 bucks or under or under yeah would you pay 60 for it mm. the first time if you never had a bottle you never seen a bottle you run across it at the store for 60 dollars i would, would you buy pay it? 60 for it the first One time, time find out if you really like it or not yeah. 60s pushing it i don't think you're getting ripped off if you pay that much for i don't, don't want to pay that off. much for it i don't if, even want to say it out loud if you end up liking it yeah it, and again like we've said this once we'll say it again whiskey is subjective yeah. We like the flavor profile of Eagle Rare. Yeah. Some people don't. Right. And that's okay. Right. Like, it's fine. I would pay 60 for it once to find out whether you like it or not and whether it's worth it. And as mm -hmm. soon as you get it, what I'd recommend is picking up some two ounce sample jars. I'll put a link to those in the video description as well. Put Eagle Rare and some other 90 proof stuff in those sample mm -hmm. jars. Stick a label on the bottom, piece of tape, write ER for Eagle Rare and whatever else other you put in there and see if it really mix them all up. See if it stands out to you. Yeah. That's what I recommend doing because I, you're gonna taste it and if you're bought into the hype, it's gonna taste great. And if you listen to us on the nose and the flavor, it's gonna taste great. It's gonna taste great. Find out if you really like it blind. Mm -hmm. If you ever have a chance to get an Elmer T. Lee, do the same with it and you're gonna you're gonna be sorely disappointed. Yeah. This is- Well, maybe, maybe not. I'm I'm almost convinced that Elmer T. Lee might be Buffalo Trace's most overhyped yeah. product in oh. their entire portfolio. Them's fighting words. That's a big statement because they got a lot of hyped up stuff in that portfolio. Mm -hmm. And this product has yet to be almost anything, anything <laughs> that I like in the 13 yeah. to $30 price point. Yeah. And it's already higher than that at retail. Yep. I would buy Elmer T. Lee if you get an opportunity at retail. I would never suggest that you pay more than $45 or $50 yeah. for it. Even if you get an opportunity to buy it for the first time, it honestly just tastes kind of like Buffalo Trace with a twist, and okay. it's it's just not it, it ain't it ain't it's, it ain't all that in a bag it's of chips. Not worth a price premium. Remember that all our, that in a bag of chips. In our opinion, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I used to say that all the time. <laughs> yeah, it ain't that. Eagle Rare, all that in a bag of chips. Yeah, kind like of. some Cool Ranch Doritos. Mm, or some Cheetos. Uh, Flamin' Hot Cheetos? No, just regular old original okay, Cheetos. Okay, those are really good too. I love yeah. those so that's much. That's even it doesn't taste like that, but that's how good it is. That's how classic it is. Elmer T. Lee is like some like knockoff of some knockoff like tortilla chips that you like you eat and you're like, oh, it's like the off brand. It's all right. Off brand tortilla chips? Yeah, that's okay. that's Elmer T. Lee. So, or off brand Doritos, yeah. which aren't as good. I think we've said it all so yeah. far. I think yeah. we can pretty much We're wrap done. it up here. Be good to each other. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers. Turns out most people 
And they watch our, for our head to heads, they watch our first impressions and our reveal. Okay. I looked at the analytics finally. <laughs> they watched those and like only 10% of the people watch the bloopers. That's so sad. That's the best part. That is the best Maybe part. Maybe people don't know there are bloopers because they don't look. Well, that's their fault. That is their fault. It's for their not, loss. For not being completists. It's their loss. <laughs> If it's an available product, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. Like a couple of pros. We nailed that. So. Like a couple of pros. Couple pro, pro, pros. I don't know where I was going with that. And then it like faded off. If you're not confident in something like that, it's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the la 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 la. My tongue got tied. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Let's drink the whiskey. Oh my gosh, you're, right, you're too intense for me right now. I love you, but tone it down, bro. I've been watching Stranger Things, man. I'm, I'm so, I wanna like get this filming done so we could go watch Shandling it. Channeling my Ve Vecna, Vesna. Vecna. Vespa. <laughs> you want a Vespa? Channeling my inner Vespa. If you had a Vespa, what color would you get? It would have to be either like the bright red and white or maybe like the mint green. But I feel like I'm more of like a bright red guy. You are a bright red and white guy, but I could, you could pull off the mint green one. Yeah. Do they have a lavender one? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know enough about Vespas oh. to know. I would do a lavender. I, I know enough about Vespas to know that I would never buy one. Yeah. There you go. Fair. If I'm going to get something with two wheels, it's going to be a bicycle or a motorcycle. Okay. When speaking of, I do want another motorcycle. That's great. A Triumph T100 Black. I want a lot of things too but we don't always get what we want. Once the studio's done. You can't always get what you want. Hey, once the studio's done, if I can maintain not buying whiskey to mm -hmm. fund bigger purchases. Good luck. I know, then I might start saving up for a motorcycle. You can't <laughs> always get what you want. All right, point taken, let's get back into the video. Get what you need. Something in my refrigerator just flashed. Like a white light just went pew. Where? Maybe it was a car driving by. I don't think so. All our windows are blacked out. That it's one, like a murder I house. I saw, I saw, see, look, you can see the light coming through that. See the trees? Yeah, I see them. Do you see trees, bro? <laughs> <laughs> well, these are both good, mm -hmm. but there is a standout. I do have a preference already, which is unfortunate. But will it change? But I will it change? I don't know. I, the problem is glass one is good. You know what? People change, okay? Whiskey can change too. And it can. You're and not it, defined by who you are, but for who you wait could be. No, that's not true. I'm not defined I'm a by philosophizer. who I am. I'm not defined by who I could be. I am defined by who I am. No. Because no one knows. Not according to my philosophy. Who I can be. Your philosophy is full of. <laughs> you can't do that. Sorry, man. You sound like Gaston. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, not Gaston. That's two on the nose. It's no. so good. Who's the crab? The crab in Little Mermaid. Uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Oh, oh, oh mon, ami, uh, mon ami. No, that was that wasn't Sebastian. That was the the candlestick. The From Beauty and the Beast. You're switching movies. I know. Yeah. What is going on? I'm sorry. Okay, top three Disney movies from from back in the day. From back in the not day. Not current. Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Is this in order? Um, not really. What's number one? Probably Little Mermaid. I probably watched that the most. Okay. Because of the singing. Because I was. Ah. <laughs> okay. Number one with a bullet, Robin Hood. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm a guy. You're a guy. But Robin Hood is by far number one. Okay. Jungle Book. Jungle Book was good. Is a like it might as well be one A. Jungle Book is, is that, good. That's Disney, right? One A. Yes. One A. And one B, Robin Hood and Jungle Book. Okay, what's your third one? I don't just watch those two over and over again. Maybe Cinderella could have been the third one. Maybe just because we I had it. I did like it. Cinderella. I like Gus. Yeah. Cinderella, Cinderella, night and day at Cinderella. Cinderella. I, I put Cinderella in there, even though the story is completely bogus. Why? She needs a man to save her. She barely knows the guy, and she's running off with this. Highfalutin. I mean, wouldn't you like Amanda to save you? Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Is that is Disney? Good. It is. Oh, that's three then. That's three. I'd say Alice in Wonderland's trippy. I like that. Okay, that's it. One Dalmatians Hood. was good too. Yeah, Robin Hood, 
Uh, one B Jungle Book. I might put Jungle Book over Robin Hood. You gotta make up your mind, bro. Man, Baloo. It's just the bare necessities, necessities the simple bare necessities. necessities. That and Forget King Louis song. That King Louis song oh. had that swing Was to it. Was that Louis Prima? Who yeah. Did the, yeah. 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 I might have to do Jungle Book as my third movie. So mine is Ariel. Man. So it's Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. And then I'm actually going to do Jungle Book. I'm going to go. I really do like Robin Hood a lot. Oh, you know what? Alms we spent way, we've spent too much time on this. <laughs> no, you can never spend too much time talking about this. I'm, I'm over it. 